Hey, welcome. Whoa, look who was that? Welcome to Fishburners TV. We just had our investor pitch night. One of our guests tonight is this wonderful man. Introduce yourself, please. Hi everyone, my name's Hong Zhang. I'm a Web3 DGen. Um, I've been in the space for about a year. Um, and before that, I was at McKinsey. So a little bit of interesting background there. And it was great to see the pitches tonight, Clive. Good. So let's start with, we had a wonderful Web3 pitch. Um, let's, let's just sort of break it down. What did you think about that from a, um, they're after the after pay market. And they're, they're sort of changing it into a Web3 service offering, which I found very interesting. Yeah, look, um, I, I enjoyed the pitch from the at pay guys. Yep. Uh, I definitely think there's... You've seen them before, right? You've, have, you've seen them I before? I have seen them before. I saw them up at uh, the Australian Crypto Convention up at the Gold Coast, and I had heard about them before that. Um, look, I think I think there's definitely a lot of opportunity still in, in, in DeFi, right? I think um, uh, there are a lot of companies in there, but still that's got a long way to go. I think these guys have a really interesting proposition, so their proposition is, is, to, is to take buy now, pay later into, into the Web3 uh, space. Um, and I love what Afterpay have done. So tell me, I, the one thing of the pitch that I, I was a little bit confused about was when they were, they were talking about that they, they had a DeFi protocol to do this. Do you know anything about what that, what that actually means? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm more of a GameFi guy right. rather than DeFi. Well, maybe, but, we'll, um, maybe we'll bring the, the, the CEO over and, uh, and ask him that question anyway. Sure, yeah. But I, I'm always, I, I think the, the Web3 Turning that that bay, the the buy now pay later model into a Web three business opportunity just shows how strong this tech is, right? Yep. And you know the fact that it actually developed a, a DeFi protocol to do it, I found even more interesting. So that actually it's not just one layer; it's going down a couple of layers, right? Yeah. It's not yep. at the consumer level; it's it's down at the layer one and layer two level, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, look, I think I, I, I mean I think that the 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 benefits of bringing that model into the into the um, Web3 space is definitely you know, being able to give the rewards back to the members, right? Back to the community. That's, that's really what, um, uh, that's really the strength, I think, of, of, of DeFi, um, as opposed to traditional uh, buy now, pay later. Models. And the idea is, instead of having a loan from a bank or a financial institution, you actually are staked by other people inside the community. So, you know, I'm staking my coins to give you the, the credits for you to spend buy now, pay later, and I'll get some return on that. That's so powerful. You know, if they yeah. could execute that at a level where it actually becomes fairly meaningful and not just small amounts of money, yeah. it fundamentally threatens the whole financial model, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think um, I think the way that they've set up their reward structure in, 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 in these sorts of, um, in what they're doing, I think is really important, and I think it has the, it has the potential to be to be quite powerful. Uh, I think with any buy now pay later business, like because the two parts are buy now pay later and Web three, I think their their merchant um, partnerships are going to be really important here, right? Like that's yeah. that's really how the other traditional Web three exactly uh, the, the, the traditional the Web buy two now pay later. Yeah, there's one. all about them acquiring merchants. Correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over uh, the gentleman who Omar who actually gave the presentation tonight. I want to really try to dive a bit deeper into the uh, into the, the DeFi protocol. I know you understand this stuff a lot more than I do, so I'm just going to get him. Maybe you can, you can just sort of give a little bit of your thoughts while I go get him, just on how you think the the wallet component of what they've built is, is critical as well. Maybe just talk a bit of it from a consumer perspective. If, if we can get wallets into consumers' hands, what will that enable in your view? And I'll just go get him. Sure, sure. Thanks, Clive. So, I guess the question was around wallets in in Web three and for at pay. Um, I actually don't know about their wallet solution, to be honest with you. But I think the benefit of the Web three wallet is is really the sort of like custodial and non custodial parts of the wallet. But here's Omar to talk a little bit more about at pay. So, welcome to Fishburners TV. Thank you. Maybe it's, a quick it's good introduction to, be here. to yourself. Uh, my name's Omar. I'm the uh, one of the founders of at pay. And happy to be here with you this evening. Yeah, so you pitched tonight. Yep. Um, one of the questions that we were just discussing about your pitch was the, uh, your, how you're using a DeFi protocol to do all of this. Yep. We really didn't get that in the pitch. Yep. It's about yep. only four minutes. Yep. But can you just explain to the audience what your DeFi protocol is and what, how you think that is so critical to what you're building? So we, we are essentially taking the best elements of DeFi, or what we believe are the best elements of DeFi, 
and applying them to a existing business business model to improve it and to change it. So the key parts of the protocol that um, we've integrated decentralization is the funding model. So as normal buy now pay later platforms basically you know derive funding from their bank credit lines, with that pay we're, we've essentially got a revenue sharing model. So that is if you hold a supported stable coin, you can stake that in the protocol and basically capture a share of the revenues that the protocol generates over the term of your stake, right? Okay, so, so just, and again, a lot of people don't really understand what a protocol yep. is. Yep. So I understand that buy now, most people understand buy now, pay later model, yep. Yep. and you're taking it and, and giving the, if you like, the loan element to the consumer, yep. right? Yep. Who have the, what, who can, what you call, you call it staking. Right? Yep. But how is that done at a oh, protocol oh, level? I, I don't okay. understand. Is so that, think, think of the protocol as a series of digital and fiat currency pools. Right. Okay, so we've secured those pools within uh, a framework that is offered by Fireblocks, which is a, 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 a prominent security sort of framework where um, our custodial wallets um, and the pathways which we can swap and convert these assets are basically held, right? So we have a series of digital currency pools. The funding mechanism is the stablecoin stake. So you stake, a, you stake a stable coin, it goes into, say, one of the stable coin pools. We can then swap that into, say, Fiat, if, if we're paying a merchant in Fiat. What, 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 when you say it's a, it's a protocol to do that, yep. like I'm a, I'm a Web2 tech guy, what yep. do you mean by that? He's talking about like algorithms, specific protocols that govern the way the whole series of swaps and rebalancing operates. So you stand, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna basically share, this is my understanding of a protocol, you're gonna share how the, how the computers talk to each other. Is that really yeah. what it is? Well, I mean, in the early stage, it's unlikely to be something that we open up and say, oh, have a look at our internals. Right. But, um, and it's not gonna be open source. Right. Um, but uh, essentially, it is a series of algorithms that will be talking to each other to manage the way the pools are allocating, um, uh, whether it's a digital currency or a fiat currency, as part of a payment um, process to a specific merchant, right? right? So if a merchant in our database uh, uh, has, um, that they want to be paid in a specific fiat currency, then they are paid in that fiat currency. If they're happy to be paid in a stable coin, then the protocol yeah. pays them in that stable coin. But I, I, I get all that because that, all that's happening in, in Web2, right? Yeah, yeah. So people are doing that already. The buy now, pay later guys are doing that already yeah. in Web2. Yeah. The, bit of it, the, the bit in the space that I, I, I'm quite excited about is, it, is when people say protocols, to me, at some point they have to be public. Yeah. So you know, I get the, you need some propriety yeah. advantage, but if it's going to be, if it's truly going to be open, yeah. and it's truly going to be a way for this to happen at a global level, yeah. You create that protocol and you open that up. Yep. Um, okay. Thank you, man. So, so the the idea there to me is when you say protocol, it's not proprietary in any way. Yeah. You have to open all that stuff up to the world. Now, as a tech company, that's a hard thing to do. Correct. But in this Web three space, it's almost an essential thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, it's not it's not something that. Um, is not going to happen. Um, there, you know, there will be transparency in terms of the internal. It, it's not rocket science. So what we're doing is not actually rocket science. Um, but in in terms of the the current build phase of what we're doing, um, it's probably not at a stage where it's something that will just be opened up and 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 shit. But okay. when it's built and operational, it's going to be pretty transparent. Okay. So a lot a lot of a lot of Web three projects are transparent from day one, yeah. right? and they get everybody working on it and it just becomes very, um, it's not manageable, Correct. right? Correct. So I guess it's sort of, there's a certain, there's a certain cut of a point where you have to start doing that. I mean, Hang, maybe, do you have any experience of any of these protocols in different, for different success stories in Web3? Did you get examples of any? Uh, I, I, look, uh, protocol is probably isn't my strong point. So my, my background, by the way, Omar, is I'm, I'm in GameFi. Um, GameFi, but, but, yeah. but there is a, one, one question I did want to ask you, actually, if it's okay. You, you, you know, I think what's interesting about your, your company is you're in buy now, pay later, right? And buy now, pay later, it's, it's, in, it's in a tough time, but it's also, 
right now, I think regulators are catching up to buy now, pay later. And, and you also mentioned that you've got this revenue share scheme, yeah. which again is also sort of like touching, it, it's, it's, it's in that space where like regulation is starting to encroach. Yeah. So I think that's a really interesting part of your yeah, business. Yeah. And I'm wondering how changes in regulation, uh, yeah. and how you see it, and how you- We, we are treating um, the buy now, and we have treated it right from the outset as if the, the, the buy now, pay later space is going to be fully regulated. So if we, we have sought compliance right from the get-go, and my co-founder is a lawyer, so it's been one of the key drivers of our ethos, and that is to comply with all the different parts of the possible regulatory framework that will help us bed down um, and establish that we are com in compliance from day one. So what does that mean? It means like we have KYC checks that are inbuilt as part of the onboarding process. We are doing credit checks as part of the um, application for the buy now, pay later. So not many um, buy now, pay later players do that. We, are, we, just, we just secured our Austrac registration as a DCE, because as I said earlier, um, the, pro you know, the, the protocol is a series of different currency pools that will be need, that'll need to be swapped and re rebalanced, et cetera, to facilitate the payments. Um, we are also seeking compliance for the stablecoin staking mechanism, which is the funding, which will probably require the AFSL um, as part of an MIS type arrangement. So we've, we're seeking all those things okay, as part of Okay, come on, you're boring us. Yeah, compliant. Okay, I accept it. No problem. We're trying to be. Is it, like, I get it. So let's move forward. Where, when are you launching? Uh, it'll be end of first quarter next year. Okay. How are you funded? Funded basically through a, 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 a fundraising through family and friends initially. And it was a decent raising, so we were, we were comfortable. But we are looking for strategic partnerships. We've had a few interest parties uh, offshore that we're in discussions with at the moment. They're also talking about, when I say strategic partnerships, it's, it's over and above just you know financial. It's, more, it's also about like uh, uh, collaborations. It could be um, you know merchants or you know specific users or, or those sort of things. Okay. So in terms of the next level of growth, yeah. So launching in the consumer space yeah. is expensive. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you're building a tech which is very disruptive to a space which is uh, you know very clearly changing very quickly. Yeah. Um, you you really have to raise a lot of money. Correct. Now. I, do you think that will come from the crypto world, or do you think it will come from traditional investors? I think it's going to come from a, uh, a cross-section. Um, I think that there is the potential for um, funding from the DeFi community, because it, it's is sort that, of... Is that, what, is that what I would call the crypto community, or yeah, would you call it... Uh, yeah, I, w I would say, yeah, the crypto community, and then there's those that are actually in the existing um, space that are possibly looking to diversify. So when I say that, I mean, like, um, companies or, or investors that are already in payments, um, and some of our advisors offshore um, have been attending some um, payment summits in different parts of the world where crypto payments is the current talk of the town, so to speak. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the real the real question: Would you take coins to fund your business? Would I? Sorry. Would you take coins, crypto coins, to fund your business? Would we take crypto coins? Yeah. Um, if it was part of a raising conducted through a, um, a an exchange that we partnered it, partnered with, then you know via a placement of a, a, a token placement or something like, then that's considerable. We would we would probably consider yeah. that. And yeah. I'm, so I'm just that, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So the, the bit about a token placement versus a, a versus a traditional VC funded, yeah, yeah. you know, that would model. be that would probably be a, a preference because I think you know uh, we have had conversations. We've we've tried to. Um, essentially not really approach VCs or be approachable by B for VCs in the early stages simply because um, in, in you know um, our, our view we weren't ready for that sort of um, conversation um, I think as as we get more sophisticated and more developed that that's something that you know uh, we can definitely uh, and it becomes more meaningful at that point for us and possibly for them as well. And I, I will sort of go back to you on this one because what I'm seeing in the whole investment space is as, as the, you know, everything's tightened up, um, that, you know, it's getting harder and harder to get access to the traditional, traditional money to raise. But it seems to be in the, in the Web3 space that that hasn't changed. That the Web3 space of funding 
which is which is sort of almost within their own world, is still accessible today. Yep. Do you have Do you have any thoughts on that? I, I, I can share some thoughts. Would you do, Would you have some thoughts on that, Omar? Or? Oh, I think I think you're right. I think for the for the right projects at the right at the right stage of their development, I think uh, and, and, you know that is something that's you know happening. Uh, yeah, I, my my thoughts are there's still money out there. Like it's it's def, it is still tighter, Clive. Um, but there is still money out there. There are, there, are, there are funds that have raised that have capital to spend on Web3 projects. What I find quite interesting about the time that we're in at the moment is, um, you know, we've, we've, we're, we're in a bear market and so yeah, there, there's less funding there. But we also have this added challenge of the fact that at the start of the year, things were just bonkers, right? People and projects, they saw all the stuff that was going on in and Web3 and people just people just started random projects because that's what the that's what the market dictated at the time. If you had anything to do with Web three, yeah. you'd start something. And so what you see now is those projects. Some of them are still alive, right? So you've got this overabundance of projects that are now battling for less money, yeah. as it is, right? Yeah. So the, the funding is still there for the good projects, yeah. but you you're, you're, but but VCs have to like they have to like trawl through a lot of a lot of additional projects to find the right ones that they want to invest in. So, so at the end of this, you're going to get higher quality projects that survive. Correct, yeah. On lower money, by the way, yeah, which yeah. means like this is, a, this is a buyer's market at the moment, right? If yeah. you're a VC yeah. and you can find good pro, a good project, that project will actually take yeah. a lower valuation. But what I, what I think is happening is they're, they're staying in the infrastructure space because it's yeah. so early, because the Web3 space is so early. Yeah. I'm not seeing any of the VCs invest heavily in the application consumer space yeah. in the web free space yeah. yet. Yeah. So it's sort of like that comes when the infrastructure is sorted out, they will go up the stack, right? And I and I'm so all the funding going at the consumer level is just coming from the web free world because it's just not there yet. Um, and you know if you talk to the, the VCs, they they really are all trying to get in at the infrastructure level. Well, I think now you're sort of like good. when you say protocols, yeah. this is what this is my whole yeah. getting back to the protocol yeah. discussion. Yeah. A protocol discussion is an infrastructure discussion, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm sort of intrigued by that because I think you're an application player myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I, think I, you're I mean, you're yeah. a protocol or, or an infrastructure player. Yeah. Oh, well, I think you're you're probably right. I mean, protocol is a, a nice term to have and it adds sophistication. Um, but I think I agree with um, what you said in terms of the infrastructure. I think that's, um, and, and we've seen that, we've experienced that. So, uh, you know, we initially um, basically came came up with the concept of app pay in, it would have been December of 2020. And what it looked like then, compared to what it looks like now, has been an evolution because the infrastructure has evolved it's along It's changing that. so yeah. quickly, isn't it? So for us, yeah. um, you know, we've, we've had to change and adopt things um, and, and um, pivot along the way in order to basically um, uh, take the best of the, of the, uh, uh, of the developments in, in the so infrastructure. So that, that sort of validates why VCs are not in this space because yeah. <laughs> until the infrastructure is sorted, yeah. until you're building on the infrastructure yeah. which is going to scale, yeah. You can't invest in that space, yeah. and that's that's what that's what they're telling me. Yeah. So, yeah. and and you know, and, and it's very basic. I mean, you know, it's it's like what even chain what chain are you building on? It's like that's a very fundamental question for an app developer, and you choose the chain for all the right reasons. Yeah. But it but it's changing so quickly. Correct. And you, you know, like you you you're going down three chains now, right? So well, initially we we were going down the Ethereum chain. Yeah. Um, obviously. Uh, but the, but the cost of that is way too high. So and even now, things. it's cost, yeah, you know, the, two, it's two way things. too high. Two things for, for a, a model such as ours was that when, when the gas fees started ripping, yeah. um, it, you know, we, we, it was not a viable. Uh, so Solana turned up at, 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 you know, at the time, yeah. and speed and the throughput rates and, and, and transaction costs made it more meaningful. Yeah. Um, but we don't know, we really don't know where this will going to be in a year's absolutely, time, do we? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so I, I'm um, like... Which is why we, we've gone, okay, well, we need to have, um, uh, our build needs to be on more than one chain. Yeah. So Algorand was the other one, and then we got approached by Polygon, the senior dev team at Polygon, when they heard about the project, they actually approached us, um, and that was about a year ago now, and said, look, we really love what you're doing with this project. Um, we want you to build on Polygon because yeah. DeFi is an area that we really want to broaden so do, you, do you see that at the application level, now let's just talk wallets, right? So at the wallet application level, it, two, five years time, you know, however long it takes, that it's going to be 
we're going to see that that all disappears and it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I can't see that right now. I mean, yeah, I'm not being I, rude, but I, what, no, I, can't I, I can't see, see that, that, you know, you build on one chain today yeah. and in two years' time, you, you know, something else is going to replace it. Yep. And you're just going to have to rip it out and change it, right? And that, that's the stuff which I find so hard yeah. at the consumer level I think, from an investment perspective. Yeah. Maybe maybe you can join it from the yeah. gamify space. Yeah. I, I think I think being, uh, you know, having, having that multi-chain sort of functionality will help and then being across all the developments with, with some of the you know new arrivals will, will also help and you, you, you know being a being a, uh, a model that is functional on a number of different chains has advantages so it means that for example if you do have for whatever reason outages or issues with one then you can route your transactions through to, to the other two or whatever it might be um, but it gives you optionality anyway yeah I, I think um not all, not all chains are created equal, right? Yeah. And, and, and choosing your chain is, is a strategic decision based on ultimately the service that you're intending to provide, right? So like you pick your chain based on the, 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 what you're doing. Right. Um, uh, I think, um, you know, we're in a stage now where people are, are, are seeing that there are, there are a number of chains out there and so you know, cross-chain compatibility, yeah. sort of like um, uh, not, not not being tied to one chain because you don't know which one's going to win, um, especially in some of the some of the smaller chains, you know, is, is is more and more important now. So people are building for for sort of like more more uh, long term cross chain compatibility, yeah. sustainability. Okay. I, think, I think that's important too. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Fantastic conversation. Web three is not going away. We're going to see more and more companies like this emerge in Australia. We're going to be one of the leaders in the in the tech development in the space. I think at the application level myself. So. Thank you so much for, for Thank tonight. You. Thank you so much for pitching. Thank you for joining us. We're going to change completely now. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about Zonely, a wonderful lady, a wonderful founder called Alicia Nagel. is going to join us. Alicia, where are you? What's your name? Oh. Thank you so much for Han spending time with us and thank you Cl Clive to interviewing our two guests. Let's roll our sponsor message, then we will have Alicia coming on stage with us. Okay. Thank you for all the people that are watching online. I believe we have people from England, Israel, the US, Okay, uh, my name is Alex, I'm the founder of Trim. First hand, dramatic impact of climate change. We will send, send a read only call. Please, jump on here, send it. You do so. You work so hard, man. You really do. We are live. Hello. <laughs> Here we are. Fishman is live. Welcome back to Fishman Alive. Thanks, I man. have to. I haven't briefed you what we are doing yet. No. So I look this is just an impromptu conversation. Excellent. What we want to do is capture like all the conversation happened at the bar. That people hanging out. There's in no our bar. What are you talking pitch about? Night <laughs> event and then seeing and hearing what's happening here because some of the audience out there who happens to be outside Sydney mm. have not been to our pitch night before yeah and is this your first time it was definitely my first pitch um, okay. I have been to many pitches okay since good. before good COVID know. I've been right. around okay. fish burners for a long long time excuse me I have <laughs> not talked to you before no that's all right tonight. no yes. welcome that's okay thanks man or, or, it's lovely or to meet welcome you. back to fish burner <laughs> yeah I know it's great to be here look yeah. it's a, it, it's an extraordinary place yeah. to build ideas and build companies and things yep. like that. Yep. I think um, there was a lot of different people here tonight. I just yes. spoke to one young girl, Priscilla, who's actually yep. just 
finished high school. She was so she, obviously inspired by your presence I, I, I on ho- stage. I hope so. I hope being the only female founder to pitch tonight. I hope yep. so. Yep. Um, and she said, "I did see that, but then yep. a lot of men didn't. So that's interesting. That's ah. really interesting." You mean the boys don't notice that there, they didn't. didn't notice that no. there was only one female pitcher tonight? I mean, I've only spoken to a few of them. Yes, uh, this is a, this is not a sample size of the whole room, but obviously, um, you know, I'm proud to represent. You know, yep. we have to get up. We have to do the same mm-hmm. job as as mm-hmm. everyone else yep. um, and and pitch our ideas and, and try and build, you know, build an yep. empire, I suppose. Yep. So before we go into detail about your experience on stage, would you yep. like to do a 30 second quick intro to all the people sure. watching this video? Yeah. Excellent. What's your name go. and what do you do? <laughs> Excellent. So I'm Alicia Nagel. I'm the founder of uh, a sports tech platform called Zonely. Yeah. Um, Zonely is a social community where people can connect, um, get active and thrive. And I'm starting with golf. So golf yeah. is in my family. My grandfather was a professional golfer um, in the 50s and 60s. Okay. And I'm a social golfer too. So um, it's one of the, during the pandemic, more people played and it's one of the most participated sports in Australia and the world. And it's inclusive, so you can play, any, anyone can play the sport, um, especially with, you know, adaptive equipment and the handicap system and things like that. Anyway, I won't bore yeah. you about golf, but basically it is, um, I'm trying to no, build but, but, a but, well... But, 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 but there, are, there is a demographic of yeah. golfer community out there oh, for sure. could immediately benefit from your app right. and from your services. That's right, yeah. And at your next pitch, mm-hmm. when a VC or investor asks you, Alicia, why you? You can say it's genuinely in my blood. Or That's in right, your blood. in my blood. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I say that my blood runs green. That's the oh, joke. Oh, right. Um, and yeah, look, I, I do love this. I've fallen in love with the sport. Yep. And so did 4.5 million other Australians last yep, year. Yep. So actually, it's an extraordinary time. I think not just for sport, but for yep. activity. Yep. We've been more disconnected than ever when you think about um, the pandemic and what I call unsocial media. Yep. Um, mm. So all of these apps, they're looking for engagement and looking to use the technology whereas what I want to build is a community where people connect using technology as an enabler Mm -hmm. but then they put that technology down and they go out and play the activity Mm -hmm, and they actually mm -hmm. physically connect Mm -hmm. they get out out in nature they get outdoors yeah I didn't have the chance to talk about that too much tonight because four minutes is actually a really short amount of time indeed indeed Um, but I think I got my point across I pitched for the first time ever and then I also sang which was kind of that was a good open up that was (laughs) Absolutely good. Great opener. I just wanted to change the room. Because, because... Brandon, before you yeah. done his, his poetry. monologue, poetry, <laughs> drama, <laughs> yeah, no, presentation. Well. Yes. Look, I just, I think it takes a lot of courage for yeah, anyone indeed, to get indeed. up here. Yeah. And um, to, it, you're basically putting your heart on your sleeve yeah. and saying, this is my dream for the world. Yes. And to do that in poetry or do it in song, I mean, look, it's just been a really fun night. It's a really welcoming community. Um, Fishburners has just been, I, I joined in the middle of this year. Fantastic. And I've met so many, I would say, already lifelong friends. So you, you stuck with me, guys. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a really fun night. It's a really fun night. Very Even though good. it was, you know, there's a lot of investors in the room. Um, there's a lot of kind of people that are very experienced in this world. They're, they're very kind with their time and mm-hmm. with their questions. Mm-hmm. So I most felt, important I felt is really that, safe. Most important yeah. that is that you feel that or you, you build new connections. That's right. That potentially could open new doors for you. 100%. Yeah. And it's funny because there's some people in the, in the crowd still that come to me for advice. And I think, gosh, I don't know all the, all the answers. Um, but here's my experience and then maybe ask a few other people here what their experience is because it, it, no one journey is the same for a founder. No, but I would imagine that why someone come up to you for mm. advice is obviously because you present and communicate so confidently. Oh, thank you. I appreciate and that. And <laughs> therefore, people feel, wow. That's a role model I want to follow. I hope so. I, I, hope so. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, I'm watching enough pitches okay. that I can tell where the pressure point are or has been. Uh, excellent. And I can see that there are lots of pressure. Just like this conversation, we, yep. we put a little bit of pressure on ourselves. Yeah. But, but the thing is that um, you 
on that stage tonight, mm -hmm. present your message clear, present the value proposition clear, and there are lots of nodding in the room, and Amazing. then agree with that. Yes, that works. So what's the um, key takeaway for you from tonight? I think the key takeaway is, is you always got to try. Yeah. Um, I think that I was so, I mean, yes, thank you. I, I probably do come across as quite confident, but I actually have a lot of anxiety. And so I was genuinely um, petrified about tonight. Yeah. But when you're up there and you're seeing all these smiling faces and you think, well, this is a really supportive and safe space. Exactly. So it's, a, it's an exactly. easy place to pitch. Exactly. So I would say do it. If you've thought about doing it, yeah. it is can be stressful, but yeah. um, just, you know, practice and just back yeah. yourself. I think yeah. that's what I've learned. Yeah. And as Clive said earlier, um, I did actually resign today uh, with my other job. Oh, um, so you have so a full-time job is full -time until now, now, until yeah, today. Yeah. And now so, it's full-time. Mm -hmm. And, and your, your app is already how many users out there? Well, there's 100 beta users. 100 uh, hopefully beta after user, tonight there'll be more. But you will ramp up more. <laughs> yes, okay. definitely. Um, link I like to say this all the time is yes. that follow Alicia yes. Nagel. Nagel, yep. N A G L E. With the <laughs> following the link in the description below. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, thank and you. Do you have a Instagram, Twitter handle? I do. A, so yeah. um, both I will put all of them yeah. down below so yep. people follow Alicia. Okay, so. And also Zonely as well. So oh, at, right, Zonely, at, Zonely, at Zonely on LinkedIn and. Um, and Facebook as well, yeah. and I'm I'm on I'm on LinkedIn, yes, as well. All right, so, I'll put yeah. all of them, Amazing. all the links down Thank below. Thank you. So, um, rather than talking about Fishburner, mm -hmm. talking about your app Sony at the moment, yeah. what's the next key thing mm -hmm. you want to see on your app or platform at the yeah. moment? So I'm still um, building the MVP, so yeah. the very okay. first product. So yeah. I, yeah, I need to launch that. That's number one priority. I but mean, you said you have a hundred pilot users. That's right. What do they use then? So it's, you mean the just app is not out there? It's, no, it's just subscribers. They're just subscribers. No, no, but how do they interact with your platform at the moment? Well, that's it. That's 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 it. That's I haven't actually built the product. It's the MVP. Ah, so yeah. So you is, have a website. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So subscribers. So beta yeah. users are my subscribers. All right. Basically. So do yeah. you have a wait list sign up form now? That's right. At your Sony website. Follow the Zoning. link in the yeah. description <laughs> below. Website. Go to Sony website, <laughs> sign up to beta users That's right. so that you can have some like minded people to play so so golf, golf games. That's right. 18 hole or 9 holes? Anything that you want. So what we want to build right. is a profile. Or, putt -putt or putting. Yes, all of the above. Putting so green as well. All golf is golf. All right. It depends on how we can integrate with those um, aggregators. Yeah. But um, we'll start with regular golf, which is yeah. on course golf. And then we want to add driving ranges and yeah. other facilities does as well. Your, uh, does your app actually already link to the Not yet. Uh, no. golf course to reserve time slot or no. etc.? That's what we need to. So all that's right. part of the discovery of the MVP. Okay. We need to understand how that works. I um, see, I and see. that connection base is quite imperative. But we can do manual matching and that's how okay. we will start with this product. That's matching. Yeah. The word matching yeah. makes sense to some people but not to me yet. Uh -huh. Tell me more about what do you mean by matching? So it's about your profile. So okay. golf is a specific sport where there's um, a spectrum of ability. And what okay. I mean by that is you might be off a really high handicap or you yep. might be off a really low one or yep. you might play at a private course or you might be a social golfer at a public one. So if you join Zonely, what we want to provide is people that are um, like-minded. And what I mean by that is um, the profile that you want to play with. So for example, it might be by gender, it yeah. might be by ability, it mm -hmm. might be by life phase, it mm -hmm. might be by geolocation. Okay. Um, we can add all those things together and yeah. find you people who are like you that you can then play golf with. Is that an algorithm or is that it will be AI or is it manual? It will be manual to start. Okay, um, so it like is manual MVP, at the yeah, moment. The yep. MVP will be manual okay, probably. Yep. Um, and then I think beyond that, we'll obviously be, be building algorithms. But I, I, I'm sort of hesitant to use um, technology that is sort of um, being used by social media companies at the moment for yep. not, maybe not for good. The way I want to build something is that I want to build a really kind and inclusive community. So yeah. it's not just about like-minded people. Yeah. Um, it's beyond, I guess, just seeing this, playing with the same people that you play with every week. It might be like, well, have you ever thought about playing with someone yeah. 
um, you know, different to you. And so I, I need to work out what that looks like mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and test and, and learn from, you know, iterations of the product. So, Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So it's all about well-being and and connection really um, okay post the pandemic so you are also raising capital i'm trying yes yep. yes i think every it's, startup needs yeah. capital at every at stage yeah. of growth i think as well pre-product yeah yep. okay it's tricky. so you're raising capital mm -hmm. and if you are interested in social golf or kind of community matching That's right, software yeah. technology yeah. Yep. Explore Zonely. Zonely. Yeah, Zonely. Z O N E L Y. Contact Alicia to define out more. Thank you. Thanks, man. How about resource? Your mm -hmm. team business is all about juggling the requirement. When yes. you have cash, you need people. Yes. When you need people, when you need more cash to pay the people, yeah. and then you need customer and you yep. need partners like yep. golf courses, etc. Mm -hmm. etc. Et mm -hmm. And potentially merchants selling products to the community. That's right. So yep. Other than the capital, what else do you need? Um, at the moment, I'm looking for um, an in-house tech team. So, oh, so um, you decide to build in-house team? Yeah, I would like. Okay. I would like that. Yep. Um, and like a CTO, or maybe even a. Co I'm, I'm still. I'm always looking for a co-founder. Yep. But in the current market, I think it's a bit tricky um, because you know the likes of you know Canva and some yep. of these other unicorns can offer quite good packages to, to technical people. Whereas if I've only got equity and maybe a little bit of salary, then I'm. I'm sort of fighting against, um, you know, like flogging a dead horse maybe. But um, yeah, I'm looking for um, potentially, uh, I don't know, like the tech thing I think is the most important. Yep. Um, I do have of advisors in, in legal accounting um, Very good. and business. And but you yeah. have been networking with one of the best lawyer right. in the land. Ashurst, yeah. Yes, like, exactly. They're just exactly. extraordinary. Yes. Um, I think Stuart, he's, I watched actually his fundraising. Um, uh, there was a session last week or the week before. That's right, that's and, right. And capital raising capital process raising, together with Jason. Jason, his, Jason, yes, his exactly. right hand man, I think, exactly. at the organization. And they just. Two of the biggest names in corporate lawyer in Sydney. Yeah, they just simplified very, really complicated um, terminology and processes that yeah. they go through as a legal. And I, on, I, I also think in startup terms, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of jargon. But when it comes to law as well, there's there's a very different niche between IP law, trademarking, um, mergers so you and acquisitions. Were in the session VC. Upstairs. I know I was. I, I was. Did I talk to you? I, was I can't remember. No, I was oh, online. You were online. I was online. But you didn't so, ask any question. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, right. no. Okay. but I was online. Fair enough. I was online. Fair enough. I saw you, man. Because I, was I remember that. <laughs> I cannot remember seeing you in that no, session. No, we've just met tonight. Yeah, right. yeah. But good, I know good, I've good seen you. you how hard you work. So I'm much appreciated from everyone from Fish I'm Burners. having so much fun. Oh, I love. I yeah. think that's great. Now, before instead of move to me, I was yeah. actually thinking about I when I asked you to join me at this bar table. Yeah. You were talking to Tam from Fora. I was. Yes. There are certain synergy in yeah. the technology platform between you mm -hmm. two. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I look forward to hearing there are some knowledge exchange yeah. and opinions yeah. so and we, ideas to help each other. Yeah, Tam's great. We um, we talk a lot about, because yeah. he's a, a few months ahead of me, um, and I think what he's doing is incredible. And he's, he's, like all the founders here, working so hard, has this vision and really believes in himself, he's backing himself. Um, and I think, yeah, there's definitely similarities, but I suppose hospitality venues, on their own are quite different to the golf community. The golf um, venues are quite fragmented. Sometimes they're private, sometimes they're owned and leased by council. I think there's quite, like with the B2B bit, there's quite a differentiation between what he's doing and what I'm doing. But maybe they um, are very similar because yeah. after all, they want occupancy. True. They, yeah, exactly. Because it's, the it's KPI so, in yeah. it as a business yeah. is that you have a t availability. That's right. And you want to fill up four seats on you know, the table. You know what it's called? It's called perishable inventory. So when there's a time exactly. tie sta time stamp, and that's the same for tea times as it is for cafes and things exactly. like that. There's a perishable time frame exactly. where they need, to, and it's no different. The e-commerce part, the aggregator of exactly. hotels like Booking.com and Airbnb, that just needs to happen in sport, which is what I'm also trying to do. So and that matching factor, yeah. to a certain extent, is actually 
similar, is it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, so, considering different criteria. Yeah. But but he is also about matching. That's right. How to combine a group of interesting people together to yeah. have a informal gathering, social That's right. gathering. Yeah, yeah. And make open up the horizon of friendship. I mean, yeah, I think we might end up working together to be honest because he did say oh well, there's a lot of golfers that have that have said that that's what they're interested in on my and i was like well hand them over tam <laughs> exactly it could be a whole series of yeah. first of all a breakfast then a golf round yeah. and then a lunch oh my god that's and my then potentially a pop crawl man that's my perfect day it's my absolutely perfect day you just labeled my perfect day so yeah. i mean and that's the thing we all we're all looking for product market fit exactly and the, exactly. the longer you go on the more you might gain traction or yeah. And then it, the, I think that's the thing about fish burners is that we're all here together and you're talking about your experiences and where you're getting to with your businesses. And eventually some might, you know, might merge. It makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. But I think for now, we're still, there's still quite a bit of separation between what he's doing and what I'm doing. And I'm actually on Fora. I love yeah. it. I've oh, met you're some on Fora. Yeah, so I've used it. Have you? So now I okay, need to get okay. him. Now I, now, this now is I a moment get, of truth. <laughs> I have not tried Fora yet, but Alicia Terrible. has been. Yeah. And it was great. One experience was All great. Right. So if Tam, um, you are watching, <laughs> I so did. tell us about how has the experience to you and what is the pros, what is the you, what part you enjoy and what part you think could be done differently to make it even better. Oh, look, I think um, it's, it's about scale, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, as a busy founder myself, yeah. I don't have a lot of time um, available mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean what I meant by scale is that um, he originally launched in the city in Surrey Hills right, and whereas yeah. I, I live on the north of the city so it'd be great if he had some closer to me at home so I could pop in and because sometimes it's a geographically not suitable um, yeah. and I'm sure that he'll get there and also yeah. I, I know that he's launching in Melbourne too which is, is really really exciting yeah. for Fora. Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, and it's all about the user journey, right? And it's interesting because I'm building our user journeys, our user flows for Zonely as well. Exactly. And you just have to make sure that you're not inundating people too much with text messages and emails because everyone's busy, right? Yep. So what does that look like in terms of people responding, saying, yes, I'm available, no, I'm not available, yeah. etc. cetera. And, yeah. and so it's, it's quite interesting because I've seen the consumer side, like the B2C yeah. side that he was... Yeah. He's building. Um, and I've actually stayed in touch with the people that I met. And I think as well, it's what he's doing is a little bit different to me because actually he's taking um, the dating apps mm -hmm. and make, and broadening that to four people instead yeah, of just one-on-one. To one a social one. context, so, 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 so yeah, social group. networking. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than one-on-one -on -one because that can be That's quite right. awkward. Yes. So, yeah. um, so I think that's a really interesting um, space for me because... Yeah. The, the dating apps for a long time have not been um, a great user experience for people on those. Because so, that yeah. market is purely going for the dating That's right. and yeah. sort of adrenaline rush market. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's a different demographic. Totally, yeah. totally different. But I think um, I'm learning a lot from the people here. Yep. Um, and I think it's just, I'm, I'm really glad to now be full-time working at Fishburners. As of the 1st of November, I am a, I have a dedicated desk now. So Very good. I'm really, I'm really grateful to be here. So thank looking you so much for your time. Forward to, looking forward to hearing and seeing yeah. your journey Thanks, progress. Dan. Yeah, thank you. And I think it's time for us to say goodbye. So check out the link in the description below <laughs> to find out more about Omar, the crypto at pay and the anti-social crypto hub that is by i forgot his name already <laughs> and um the link of course to it's alicia only, yeah. zongni thanks so and much for watching we wave goodbye and see you, see you at soon. next fish burn alive <laughs> excellent thank and you i press my button to go